Hi all, Bones here from Oz BSA Bantams and welcome back to the workshop. So we're actually in full production mode at the moment machining away so I thought I'd just give you a, a quick walk around about what we're doing and what we're up to in the workshop at the moment. We don't actually have any Bantam engine rebuild restoration stuff in, all we're doing is um, catching up on parts. We've actually pushed out all our customer work so we can manufacture parts because we're a bit behind. Um, I'll give you a, a quick quick go around. So in those two garbage bags there are uh, the crankcase halves of my Harley Davidson, which was going really well up until the point where they sent me the wrong pinion bearing. So that's ground to an absolute halt. All this stuff here. There's all the specialist tools I had to make to get this engine together and apart. I think I've, I've sort of done these in a different video. We'll take it. That's Justin over on the turret lays there. We'll go over there in a sec. Uh, that is the long stud for your mudguard and saddle fixing uh, stud on the D1s that goes you know goes through the guard and your springs uh, slide over that nut either side BSF thread either end barrel studs uh, high tensile steel barrel studs now yes they are cut threads and it would be really nice if I could get them rolled but no one in Australia will roll them and I'm not about to go sending stuff around the world so you actually see these advertised on bloody ebay and places and they're stainless steel for the life of me why you'd want to ever put a stainless steel barrel stud in is beyond me their stainless is as soft as butter um, it's about not even two thirds of tensile strength of 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 this of this stuff and also this is in imperial sizes it's not eight mil it's the best quality stuff i can get in imperial sizes plating baths you've seen that before we're just plating up studs so Justin's doing that in between working on the turret lathe and we'll go and have a look at that right now so we're actually making uh, plunger plunger front wheel nuts and these are rigid rear wheel nuts as well so I can't get it too close um, but obviously we haven't put the thread in there we'll have to turn that around chamfer that edge there and then run the tap through from that side but we've run out of those the second hand stock i've got is completely mullered you know like it's you know it's 70 years old and had 37 different types of spanners on them so anyway we'll go through on the lathe and see how justin makes one So over here I'm just roughing out uh, rotors for electronic ignition. So just machine them out to accept another insert to take the Bantam taper. So we're, we're through that because we've actually run out of CDIs. And once I finish the ones in here and all these and we get these on the shelf, I reckon half of them will go within a week. We've got had that many back orders. So here's our trusty Ward turret lathe, wonderful machine. So we'll go through some of the features of this in a minute. Justin's just doing some chamfering. Just ran the edge off. Turns it over and he's on. We just keep facing it off so the face is nice and clean. I'm going to come around the other side, get out of his way, and I might be able to move the trolley. And I might be able to show you a bit better from here how things go so just is going to index around the stop 
Now, because this is hex, we can't move it while it's on the run, so we've got to stop the machine. So that's right up against the stop. Collet closed. Machine on. And we bring in the centering drill. So center, tapping size drill come in. So that depth of that hole is about five eighths of an inch. You can see over the back here, that tool there, is the chamfering tool for the to the head side of the nut and it's a, it's a pretty long angle because we don't want to cut too much of a, a hex on it like cut too, too much of a chamfer on the hex otherwise you start reducing the, the flax so we noticed that on a batch of rear wheel nuts that we got index around come in with the chamfering tool out of the way and now we're back around to turning I'm going to come around the other side so tool change out we're a turning tool so on here you'll see that we've just got marks so this is the this is the first Pass. We're cutting it down the diameter in two passes. And I think I might have a bit of cooling on the lens. I have. That's a bit better. So that comes up to a mark down here. You'll see a line and there's a and there's a point up. That's the point of there. So we'll wind it into full depth there, and this is the this is the finishing cut down the size. Now, if you've watched any of the videos before, this has no power feed on this machine. It's 100 years old. It was built in the 1920s, late 1920s, and so. Just come around to the mark now to the line and then he'll wind it out. And we'll do a tool change for our parting off tool. Now the parting off tool goes against the stop down there. Locks the carriage with the carriage lock right there. And he's going to do a plunge cut in, but not, he's not going to part it off. also marked on the cross slide here. So you hear it humming first and that was just cutting through the hex and now we're cutting a full diameter. Now the reason we're only plunging halfway is that this tool over here, it saves the wear and tear on that from it plunging in. So I'm just round off our edge because the original wheel nuts had a slight radius on there, we try to copy that. And now what Justin's doing is coming in to cut the, the chamfer on the edge of the, the hip. We'll just hear it humming. Slightly. Out goes the tool. We'll come back around to the groove that he originally cut. It's all marked on here where he has to go. So we'll position that tool into the groove. Wind it back a fraction, just hear it, wind the tool out, and then he's back onto the stop for the parting off tool, and he'll finish parting it off. Face off the bar stop, and that's it. Just you better blow off just. And that's the finished product. So as you can see, you know, off the tool finish and everything, this old dunger of a machine does a fantastic job.
and as I said before, it allows us to make uh, these parts in the correct sizes and the correct quality. You know, like we get some reproduction stuff that is, well, I was going to say crap, and it is. Um, so we prefer to make some of this ourselves and know that we're holding tolerance to the right sizes, right threads, right everything. So that's not bad for a 100 year old machine, is it? So they're going to go off um, whilst Justin's machine this is also doing the zinc plating over there so these will all get zinc plated up as well so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, insight into what we're doing and what we're up to so we've got a, we've got a few days worth um, what we'll do with these because these have got longer on the shoulder uh, and these actually sell a lot more than what the rigid front wheel nuts are. And that shoulder is half the width on a rigid front wheel nut because you've, you haven't got the axe head um, front forks. So what we'll do is readjust this when we're ready to go and do the rigid wheel nuts. We've just got to move that in the right distance and then don't change the setup so so we'll do, we'll do a we'll do a production run of um front wheel nuts as well um, uh, a little bit later on and then we'll be have all our stock ready for that sorry about going handheld it's pretty hard to put it on a tripod working and uh trying to show you everything so but anyway from bones and justin, justin at osbsa bantams we'll see you later